when you said this is how you view like white leftists um we try to hold on to like empire in that sense or like the american dream or that america could be something uh better than what it is i I, i'm thinking i'm looking at the the window washer right the african and i'm looking at and i'm thinking about ados um and those type of reactions Mm. that look would look at this and say well because we were washing the windows you know we deserve a piece of the you know of this empire and you know that take that perspective as opposed to looking at it for what it is or having a different um understanding of what what this is or even understanding settler colonialism Iranian nuclear weapons development. They have turned the island into a communist hellhole. The experiment in Venezuela has failed completely. I want to play a clip from the great Malcolm X talking about why he is not American why he's African, and why he does not identify with this empire of the United States. African Americans, or so-called Negro, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons that it is bad for us to continue to just refer to ourselves as so-called Negro, that's negative. When we say so-called Negro, that's pointing out what we aren't, but it isn't telling us what we are. We are African and we happen to be in America. We're not American. We are people who formerly were Africans who were kidnapped and brought to America. We... Our forefathers weren't the pilgrims. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock was landed on us. We were brought here against our will. We were not brought here to be made citizens. We were not brought here to enjoy the uh, constitutional gifts that they speak so beautifully about today. And because we weren't brought here to be made citizens today, now that we've become awakened to some degree and we begin to ask for those things which they say are supposedly for Americans, they look upon us with hostility and unfriendliness. So our unwanted presence, the fact that we are unwanted, is becoming magnified in all of America's preachments today. The brilliant Malcolm X laying down the law, talking about, quote unquote, the United States. Our forefathers are not the pilgrims. That's why even when people talk about we, when they're like, oh, we, America, I'm like, who's we? You know, even when it comes to like climate change, they're like, we, we. I'm like, I don't, you think if I go right now to like Trump country or to some of these 98% white areas, they'll view me as a quote unquote American. So uh, comrade Erica, you know, just turning it to you, do you identify as American? Uh, tell us why or why not? No, I just want to um, shout out Nefa Freeman because Nefa is really on me. Like that's how I sort of unlearn the we, because you just say that like habitually, you know, by like uh, habit, you know, you used to saying, oh, our country, even if you're talking, negatively about the country you still used to identifying with it so there would be times where i'd be like yeah our president he was like who president like <laughs> that's not about you know so now okay. i've learned to like really understand that you know that's not i'm not a part of that we i'm not a part of that R. um and and was it meant to be right if we understand the nature and the uh, the foundation of this uh nation but no, I do not identify as American. Um, Hood Communist has on our uh, Hood Communist radio, we have a good uh, public education episode. Where we talk about what it means to be African, um, what it means to identify as African. Um, I identify myself as an African, uh, which is, of course, as I talk about in that podcast episode, um, you know, it's new, but I do identify as African because I understand it as a political identity. The same way I understand is identifying oneself as American 
in the same way. Um, so I don't align with the concept of this settler colonial nation. Um, but I do understand myself as an African. And, and because I understand myself as an African, I understand that if Africa is not free, then my own uh, sovereignty and my own freedom is at risk. Yeah, most definitely. Same, same with me. I mean, it's just, for me, it's like, understanding the history of the United States, understanding the, the true nature of colonialism changes your perspective. This is a political cartoon that I want to share with y'all. Uh, this is something, I had a great high school teacher who used to teach us about the, the real history of the United States. This is by a man named uh, Puck, I forget his first name, but this is from the 1800s, late 1800s during the Spanish-American War. It's called School Begins, and it's Uncle Sam, quote-unquote, teaching the subjugated colonized peoples under the domain of what is considered the area of control of the U.S. So you have on the front the Philippines, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Cuba. Uh, in the back, you have some of the states that are already quote unquote students, mm -hmm. Texas, California, New Mexico, which are all colonized areas from indigenous and Chicano and Mexico. And then you have in the back, if you could see uh, a Native American uh, indigenous student with the book upside down, you have a Chinese student in the back. Uh, you have an African, a young African man cleaning the window. Uh, and basically the whole theme of this political cartoon is teaching quote unquote patriotism, US patriotism to the subjugated colonized peoples. And whenever I talk about the importance of national liberation and sovereignty and why I reject America, this idea of America and this idea of the United States. This is how I feel. This is how some, some white leftists look to me when they try to, <laughs> when they try to tell me like, Oh, that's reactionary. That's ultra left to point right. out that there are oppressed nationalities where it's like, shut up, like just embrace the empire. You're American right. without understanding that, this, these people have viewed us as lower class. Look at the way we're depicted. And, and mind you, this political cartoon is like one of the most famous in U.S. history. It's right. a cartoon that accurately represents how the U.S. empire views colonized and oppressed nationalities. So I don't know if you have any reactions to that. Yeah, if you can put it back up, I just wanted to note one thing. Because um, when you said this is how you view like white left this um we try to hold on to like empire in that sense or like the american dream or that america could be something uh better than what it is i, I i'm thinking i'm looking at the the window washer right the african and i'm looking at and i'm thinking about ados um and those type of reactions mm. that look, would look at this and say well because we were washing the windows you know we deserve a piece of the you know of this empire and you know that take that perspective as opposed to looking at it for what it is or having a different um understanding of what what this is or even understanding settler colonialism so i thought so when i seen that window washer it made me think of like this is how people sort of um root or plant themselves as you know we built this nation that sort of kind of rhetoric that that's right. what I'm thinking of like how people sort of cement themselves to that sort of Americanism because they had some part in building it without even really understanding the like the colonial aspect of it. And that's on and that's all right. That's on purpose, right? We understand that too. 